bolt to go in. That is the and it should be used. <laughs> so I've got the, um, let's take a little. Now then crew and welcome to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now I've not been able to do many videos today. We've had the uh, house washer people with the water blasting outside of the house and they've been using a petrol um, water blaster it's been really really noisy so they've just gone and I've got just enough time to get a couple of videos recorded before I have to go inside and do some other stuff so in continuation I want to get these um, these sort of basic uh, picoscope um, waveform captures how to do sort of videos um, out of the way by this week by the end of this weekend because uh, I want to get on with some real spannery stuff you know anyway so that's the Picoscope, uh, it's the 2000 series, same one as on the previous four videos that I've already uploaded. Um, crazy useful, uh, only two, uh, 230 bucks. Um, although I must admit, now that I'm getting more into using this one, it does have some limitations and I've got to sort of work around those. Um, the maximum voltage that it can work with is, is plus or minus 20 volts DC and um, you know for things like ignition primary voltage. It's not enough, um, you know, so it's a bit of a pain to be honest, but I can work around it. I've got down here, I bought at the same time, an amp clamp. Now this is really, really useful, and if you're going to get a picoscope or any kind of um, oscilloscope sort of device, you really do need to get an amp clamp at the same time. It's, it's you know, to see amperage flow is is really, really important actually on some, some diagnostics. Um, so this video is going to cover very quickly how to capture the voltage supply waveform and the current flow waveform on a f electric fuel pump, one that's used in conjunction with fuel injection. Um, so there's going to end up being two lines on the graph on the screen, which is pretty cool. And I'll run through what each line um, you know, means and, and why it's doing what it's doing at that time. Okay, so we'll go and hook up the Picoscope first. I've got one of my bikes up on the hoist at the moment, so it's quite handy. It doesn't take long to get set up. So here we go. I've moved the ECU away from its normal position and just zip tied it up on the frame. Um, a, because it's just a lot easier to get to, to be honest, and you better see better all the various wires and stuff. And the wire that's the switched ground by the ECU for the uh, fuel pump is the black wire with the yellow tracer. So we're just going to I'm just going to back probe that first. Oh, look at that, straight in. Professional. Not really. Right, so first job is to rig up our little probe on there. Make sure we're away from that insulation bit. And that's going to give us our voltage. And we're going to have that on channel B on the scope. Right. Come on, little insulation piece. There we go. Right, we'll stick that onto battery negative. And then, we're going to grab our little uh, amp clamp. Now on the amp clamp itself, it's got a couple of settings. We're going to use one millivolt, sorry, one millivolt to 10 milliamps. So basically the, the scale on the graph, on the uh, picoscope, for each volt on the uh, vertical scale, that will equate to 10 amps. So we'll stick it on, on the middle one, and uh, just zero it. And then, without dropping things around too much, it's a bit awkward. Now the current flow basically is into the ECU, so got a little arrow in there. Look, you see that? I'm going to try and wiggle that around the wire. It's a bit tight. Don't want to destroy things. Oh, there we go. Look, professional. Right. So we're all set up at the bike end. Now what we need to do is plug everything into the EC, into the uh, oscilloscope. So we're going to use the amp clamp on A. And, where's, where's he gone? Come back. And our voltage will be on channel B. Bloody good. So all that's left to do now is to plug in that USB cable. Right, we're ready to take some readings. Okay, let's fire up the old Picoscope. 
And we're going to have some parameters that we need to set. Because we're using both lines, don't forget, as well. Got two lots of parameters to make sure are set properly. Now, um, come on, little picoscope, you can do it. Right. Time base, let's use 500 millisecond divisions. There we go. And now line one is the amperage, that's the blue line. And we're going to use plus or minus one volt, which gives us basically plus or minus 10 amps. And it shouldn't use any more than that. Uh, DC. Now the red line, line B, that's just normal um, you know, 12 volts-ish. So plus or minus 20 volts will be fine for that. And of course it's already recording because it's a pain. Right. Okay, we're about ready to take off first sample here we go oh one last thing i don't need to start the bike all i need to do is turn on the ignition and it'll prime uh, and then of course a few seconds later the fuel pump will turn off and that's the waveform we're going to capture well easy as that Okay, I've just realized that you can use a space bar to start and stop it rather than having to try, <laughs> try and use the little square. Honestly, it's a learning curve. Okay, so where are we? Right, well, just zooming in, and the beauty of touchscreen is fantastic. Okay, so the red line is basically um, loom voltage, yeah, ignition live. So at the moment, whilst the, the line is at zero volts, the ignition's turned off. At this point in time here, this is where I turn on the switch on the dash and we get basically, let's have a little look, 12.56 volts. Oh, still, still in pretty well that bike. Little battery. 12.56 volts um, on that wire. Now don't forget the fuel pump is is a neg is a ground switched circuit, so the ECU puts it to ground. So basically until it's put to ground, we should see battery voltage on that wire. So this is the period of time here that the ECU is having a little think. Do I really want to start up the fuel pump? At this point here, it decides it will do, which is a good thing, really. And it puts that circuit to ground, so you'll see that this voltage then plummets, basically, almost to zero. It ends up at zero and we start to have current flow and the blue line is our current flow and we have no current flow until the point that, that wire is put to ground obviously because there's no circuit as soon as it's put to ground we get quite a spike in current flow which is oh curses in the way so look about oh yeah look um so that'd be 7.6 amps of current flow but only very momentary and then it very quickly drops down and stabilizes around about yeah look 3.7 uh sorry 1.8 amps there we are look, i'm reading the reading wrong one there um so yeah 1.8 amps is sort of continuous current flow on that uh, fuel pump and then if we scoot along so at the moment the whole thing is just priming up we go on to the second screen bring it back there we go, look, because we're zoomed in. And this is the tail end of it priming. So the fuel pump is still running here. The voltage, the, what the circuit's put to ground by the ECU, so we've got basically zero volts at that point. And the ECU then disconnects the circuit, and you can see the red line bounces back up very quickly to battery voltage, 12.37. Obviously, it's down a little bit from running the pump. And, of course, the amperage flow, the current flow through that motor... At this point here, when as soon as the circuit's broken, it ceases, and that goes straight to zero. And then, finally, if we just scoot on a little bit longer, this is the point when I then turned off the ignition switch on the dash, pushed the button in, and of course, loom voltage plummeted to zero. Cool. It's bloody good, isn't it? Well, there you go, crew. Pretty simple, isn't it? And I mean, you know, I'm just getting my head around it, but it's not difficult to be honest, once you think about what you're looking at and you understand the basics of how the component's operating. But that is the first time, actually, thinking about it, that I've ever done used both lines on the scope. And um, 
it is really, really useful to be able to, you know, take comparisons and see how, you know, the relationship between one signal and the other. Now, sure enough, that's obviously, you know, on the same component. It's the fuel pump we're looking at, voltage and amperage, amperage flow, current flow. But, um, you know, you could be looking at two totally different components, two different sensors uh, on the bike. Um, and also having that, um, that amp clamp is really, really useful. You know, you can, uh, you can diagnose a lot more problems with that. Okay, well, that's the end of the short video. It was just basically a way of sh showing you how to set up the Pico scope to, uh, to check your fuel pump operation. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, why not click on the subscribe button? You'll see a little gear icon turn up. Click on the gear icon and then you can tick the box to turn on notifications. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals, but I would ask, first of all, comments on YouTube, please. That's where the videos are, and that's where most people look for the answers to all the questions. I have a read through. It's amazing how many people actually just read through the comments and, and contribute. It's great. Okay, crew. Well, until next time. Oh, one more thing. Sorry, nearly forgot. Uh, I'll put in the description down the bottom a link to the guy that sells these Picoscopes here in New Zealand, just in case you're interested. All right, crew. Cheers. Over and out.